So hello there and welcome back to a brand new episode of the DNF1 podcast, a show where we talk all of the latest news, gossip and events in the world of Formula One and we relay that back to you for your listening or viewing pleasure, depending on which platform of course you choose to follow us on. And guys, it's the first episode after Christmas. Happy holidays to every single one of you, wherever you are celebrating around the world and of course whatever holiday you are celebrating of course. Um, No secret us guys, obviously we're celebrating Christmas in particular but whichever you guys are partial to around the world. Happy holidays to every single one of you. I hope you're all staying safe. And more importantly, I hope you're all having a lovely time, however you choose to spend your holiday period. And as it's the end of the season, guys, we are going to be giving our 2021 season review at DNF1 in the spirit of everyone seems to be doing that at the same time. So we are going to do our part and do our season review as well. Certainly so many high moments, so many low moments, and so many WTF moments, for lack of a better way of putting it. But we're going to get right into it. And joining me, of course, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Courtney Pine. And joining us once again, as we mentioned in the last episode, our newest member of DNF1, Mr. Lee Wallington. So guys, obviously, we've just had our nice uh, Christmas break. Um, well, so to speak, at least. How are you both doing? Did you uh, have a nice Christmas? Yeah, I had a, had a great one. Uh, I just, just want to quickly, just some more regards to anyone who's had their Christmases, Christmases impacted by this bloody variant. Um, it's gone through. It's gone through us like wildfire. So I just hope that everyone's had as good a Christmas as they possibly could. And here's to a much better 2022. Yeah, it's really, really nice way of putting it. And uh, how about yourself, Lee? Uh, looking good in the tinsel, no less. And I should say, Courtney wearing his nice West Ham Christmas hat as well. For those of you listening and not sure what we're wearing in particular, anything Christmassy. Um, but yeah, Lee, looking like a nice bit of a Christmas tree there. Thank you. Imagine my eye colour. Kind of um, <laughs> I'm feeling very fat, to be honest. Gorge myself. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, I've shared food with you, Lee. I can imagine exactly what that would have been like. Probably not a pretty <laughs> sight um, going over that turkey. But nonetheless, yeah. And uh, for those of you wondering what the hell I'm wearing, um, it's a Spider-Man Christmas jumper. You know, see the new film, fantastic. Definitely recommend seeing it. For no, those spoilers. no, yeah, no gonna, spoilers. No, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. Um but uh, yeah, I mean, I had a look online to try and see if there were any F1 Christmas jumpers, but I'm sorry, F1, like, I'm not, I, well, I, I think there was one for like £80 on some website somewhere, like in no, F1, bad. it was like, and I'm just like, no, I'm not buying that, no way, I think, no, sorry, it was Alfa Romeo, I think they had a Christmas jumper, Alfa Romeo, uh, the F1 team, and uh, they wanted like, seven, I think it was like £60, £70 or something like that, I was like, I really wanted an F1 Christmas jumper, but I was not paying that much for it. I think that's something that needs to be done. I think more teams need to make Christmas jumpers. I've hardly seen any teams making it. I think Renault did one a few years ago, but I don't care really which team it is. You know, I mean, those of you that follow this podcast will know that I'm a Ferrari fan. Obviously, I'd love one if Ferrari made one, but uh, any sort of F1 Christmas jumper would be nice. I mean, the fact I was contemplating an Alfa Romeo one just says it all. Like, we need more Christmas jumpers. It's a niche that's not been really exploited much by the F1 market. So Liberty Media needs to get on that for next season. Anyway, look, let's, without any further distraction, let's get into the season review. Um, a lot of high moments, a lot of low moments, as I said already, lots of excitement. And we're going to try and break it down bit by bit to give some of our, uh, well, the spotlight to some of our favourite moments of the season. Now, obviously... Everybody watching this episode is going to ask what's in our top 10 list for drivers and teams. So I want to start with the teams. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, the teams kind of just position themselves in the Constructors' Championship. Well, not necessarily, because some teams were expected to do really well this season, some teams not so much. And of course, there were a few surprises in terms of who actually surprised us in a good way and who didn't surprise us compared to what Courtney and I predicted in our season preview. For those of you interested, can go and check that out to try and see if we were right in some of those and if we were wrong. So, as it's our newest member of the team, Lee, you have the honour of running through your top 10 list in, uh, I'm going to say, is it descending or no, ascending order? Yeah, ascending order, so 10 to 1, of which teams in your mind did the best job this season. So, uh, run us through your list. Well, I'm sure you can both have guessed what's uh, number 10. Um, easy can we get this yeah, one I mean, out of the way and just say are we all huss for number 10 yeah yeah we're yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing one tonight okay um, so um should we all say nine. that alfa romeo and number nine as well sorry yes. i'm getting ahead of myself 
we agree. That's good. So, okay. Yeah, I, I, I had to, guys. I set it up and I had to say, it. yeah. So ten and nine, we're all Hass and Alpha from out, right? Yeah. Is there any reason you guys want to get into before we move on to the real list as to why those two teams are at the bottom? Yeah. Or are we all in agreement as we know why? Who wants to yeah, have a go at it? Well, we we're all in agreement, but we should probably obviously just do a. And explain to the yeah we, should, we yeah. probably should yeah why well, there we come to that decision um, okay so with, with Hass one of their drivers is dead and Alfa Romeo are, are, as a team are dead so that's that's my reasoning for it um Lee <laughs> <laughs> um I, would, I wouldn't put in those explicit terms but yeah, yeah. A, in, in Hass there's one driver driving. Um, so they don't do very well um, in that aspect. Although Mazepin, in his defence, he stopped spinning halfway through the season. Um, yeah, yeah, so, got him credit due for that one. Yeah. Um, so he did improve. He stopped spinning. Um, so you give him credit, and obviously some careful driving, um, not crashing into Lewis, because um, that could have been a nasty accident. So mm. do give him credit for for quick, quick reflexes there. Um, uh, that's, that's it. That's, that's basically the key to the season. Uh, so, uh, nothing else. Um, yeah, now for Romero, yeah, it's a dead team, two drivers that probably knew a lot earlier than we did that they were on their way up um, for different reasons, obviously. Um, no, neither team progressed their car, no development because they're all focusing on next year. Um, so, it was trying to be who's the worst team this year. And it was a, that was their fight. Yeah, I mean, the proof will be in the pudding in 2022 because Haas, from the get-go, prioritised next season with the huge regulation changes. So obviously, you know, 2021 was never going to be a season for them to try and get back into the midfield where they want to be. It was more of a season of exploration for their two drivers, preserving their resources and at the same time trying just to learn as much as they can from their new recruits. I suppose the, the only highlight, I suppose, from this season for Haas is that um, it was Mick Schumacher. Really, uh, I, think, I think he had a very good season, all yeah. things considered. Yeah. Um, got into Q2 in Turkey without putting it in the wall, as he did in France. So we'll put a bit of an asterisk over that one. But still, you know, some great stuff from him as well. There was one point, obviously, where in Baku, I think it was like P13, where it bumped them ahead of, uh, was it Alfa Romeo or Williams for P9? Something like that, um, temporarily. And then, of course, dropped them back down when they scored points. I think it was Williams, yeah, when they scored points. And then, of course, they never looked back after that. So, uh, yeah, plenty, hopefully, for Haas to look forward to next season. Hopefully, their efforts aren't in vain and that they're going to be trying to make a good go in the midfield when all the rules are reset for 2022. Um, Alfa Romeo. We'll briefly touch on them as well because I, I think it's worth talking about Alfa Romeo because it's very easy to kind of write Haas off in 10th for obvious reasons. But Alfa Romeo did have... Uh, an interest in trying to do well in 2021, but it very much fizzled out very, very quickly. And, you know, despite the best efforts of Kimi Raikkonen, who sadly uh, has retired from the sport at the end of the season, and Antonio Giovinazzi obviously trying to stay in F1, um, there wasn't really a lot of fanfare for the Alfa Romeo team. And, and in return, they didn't really give us much back to sort of uh, cheer about, I suppose. Uh, Courtney, you've been very vocal on Alfa Romeo this mm-hmm. season. So uh, anything you want to comment on them before we move on? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of set that one up. Um, <laughs> fair enough. Um, we'll move on. Lee, so before we disturb and interrupt your list again, um, why don't you run us through your number eight all the way down to number one for the team okay. this season? So number eight is Aston Mine. Uh, number seven is Williams. Number six is Alpha Tauri. Number five is McLaren. Number four is Ferrari. Number three is Alpine. Number two is Red Bull. And number one is Mercedes. So there's a few surprises there. Yeah, I told um, you. I, I thought your, your list and my list was going to be very, very similar. And then as soon as you got near the top, it was completely different. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, Aston Martin, I think, is the first one we got to go to. Obviously, eighth. Um, want to talk about that one a little bit as to why you put them there? Um, so Aston Martin, uh, obviously... Like the other uh, low-rake cars on the grid, i.e. Mercedes, were severely impacted by the regulation change at the, um, from last year into this year. Unlike Mercedes, however, Aston Martin either couldn't figure out or had no interest in resolving their aerodynamic issue. Obviously, they did improve slightly, but they were languishing more towards the back of the grid, especially compared to the pink Mercedes that we had last year. Um, so they, they just... They had a few good good races, but 
I think it was more Sebastian Vettel's arrival than uh, Lance Stroll doing some wonder lap or lap or two. Um, so it's uh, obviously from the Stroll perspective, or Stroll senior, it was a very disappointing season. Um, and yeah, I would probably say it was a very underwhelming. Yeah, um, I'm going to also talk about oh, what was the other team I wanted to ask you about? Um, Alpine in the top yeah. three. Yeah, Very there, big jump for you there. Considering it was Renault last season, obviously they finished in the top five um, in the Constructors' Championship. They've ra- they've maintained that this season yep. under Alpine. So uh, why have you put them as the third best team this season, Lee? So it's obviously not for car development. Um, so I just want to make that clear. I'm not saying Alpine had the third best car on the grid, which they didn't. Um, but it's more about the, for me, was the opportunities when they got presented it. They took it. They didn't collapse. They stay with it. I am talking not just about um, Budapest, but that is a, a good example. They managed to maintain their cool head. They didn't panic. They didn't melt away under the pressure of a looming Lewis Hamilton coming towards uh, Ocon. And they just put a Fernando in the right place to help out his teammate. And you think early in the season, I think it was um, Portimao, I believe that uh, they had a, uh, Alpine had a good race. And that was a sign that, oh, maybe this is going to be an interesting midfield, like last year between, I'll say midfield, top midfield fight between Ferrari and McLaren and Alpine. Um, and Alonso wasn't quite there and Ocon was taking it um, to the, the bigger teams, i.e. McLaren and Ferrari. And he, even when Ocon somehow ended up leading the race in Qatar, Right, it didn't last very long. Um, uh, it lasted one corner. <laughs> um, oh. But the there's still the, the composure of the team and they, they how they handle themselves. And I think it's really impressive what you consider a midfield team. If you put at Haas, for example, somehow Mick Schumacher or Nikita, most people would find themselves leading a race. I don't think, no offence to Gunther or his management, but I don't think they know how to handle that kind of pressure. He's not been in that situation, considering that as a team, they haven't been in that position. Uh, Alpine, when was the last time they won a race? Uh, it was probably uh, Kimi Raikkonen or something, and uh, probably as a team outfit. I think um, a Lotus back in 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, that's what I was yeah. But that, you, you lose your touch. I mean, you see how much, um, well, it's good, it's good as McLaren is, how much McLaren has gone away compared to its heydays of only 10 years ago. Um, so it's yeah, that's, that's why I was being really impressed with Alpine as a more of a management level than uh, an actual constructor. But obviously that's still part of the team. Yeah, no, very much so. And uh, just for reference, for those of you keeping score on this, we will be putting our list in the description on YouTube. So you will be able to see in the descriptions what our lists are and see if you agree with them or not. Uh, actually, I might put it as a pinned comment as well. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Lee, you put Mercedes as number one there. So uh, yep. was that right? Yep. Fair yep. enough. Uh, Courtney, let's go to your list. What are your mm-hmm. teams? Eight all the way to one, as we've established with Hassan Alfa Romeo in 10 and ninth place. So I'm going to put Aston Martin in eighth. William seventh. Oh, see, I'm very close between. Do you know, I'm not going to be harsh on Alpine. I'm going to put Alpha Tauri in sixth, Alpine fifth, <laughs> and then I'm going to put McLaren fourth, Ferrari third, Red Bull second, Mercedes first. Okay. That's pretty close to my list. Um, I, I feel like I'm going to come under fire here from a few people, but there is a logic. There is a logic to my list. I haven't necessarily gone for who's finished wearing the constructors. I think I've gone for, as I've mentioned already, um, for teams that, you know, we expected them to perform in a certain way where they are and where they ended up going and obviously what they did with what they had. So we'll get into that in a moment. But uh, yeah, I, c- I can't really think of any major surprises, Courtney. I mean, we talked about Aston Martin at the bottom uh, there as well, and um, all the way up. Yeah, it looks pretty close to my list. Um, I'll, I'll run through my list, and then we'll talk about any surprises here. I feel like I'm going to regret this. Um, clip this comment, or clip this bit. Uh, so Aston Martin 8th, 
for the, all the reasons that you mentioned, Lee, already, and Courtney, I imagine you would agree with, I think they were mm-hmm. very underwhelming. They were they were the team coming in with the third best car from last season. Obviously, they had the wings clipped massively by the regulation changes. Um, and unlike Mercedes, they just weren't able to recover from it. And maybe they prioritise next season, and we'll see if that worked out for them, as it has done with other teams. But we'll just have to wait and see. But it wasn't a good year for them. Williams, seventh. I think Williams did a great job and got some big points finishes when they had to, which helped in the constructors. And they've come a long way, considering that their car was completely nowhere last year in a way that Haas's were nowhere this year. Um, they did a fantastic job to recover that and had some a, a few good days. I think there was a period where there's like three consecutive points finishes in a row or something like that, three or four. So, you know, brilliant stuff from them. Alpha Tauri, sixth. Alpine, fifth. McLaren, fourth. Uh, Red Bull, third. Mercedes, second. And for, I thought Ferrari were the best team this season. Now, disclaimer, I know I'm a Ferrari fan, so, you know, come out with a bias if you want to. But I, I think Ferrari, the reason why I put them number one is because, yes, Mercedes won the Constructors' Championship. But I think the main reason they did, and this is more about what they did that Red Bull didn't, is that Sergio Perez didn't score more points this season than he should have done and points that were lost by Max Verstappen. Now, of course, Mercedes deserved the Constructors' Championship. They did the best job. And even though they they were, they did have their wings clipped a little bit, they still turned up to Abu Dhabi, uh, not Abu Dhabi, they still turned up to Bahrain with only Red Bull really ahead of them and not by much. And obviously they were able to overcome that. So obviously a great job. So given what Mercedes had and how strong a, f- a lot of people thought they were going to be, the fact that they were playing catch-up this season was a bit surprising. Yes, they won the Constructors, but I think, you know what? It's, they weren't as Mercedes-like. They made some mistakes this season. Um, particularly early in the season, they made them some mistakes. Hungary, great example. Lewis Hamilton pretty much had the race to himself after what happened in the first uh, lap. And then they made the fatal mistake by not pitting him when everyone else did. And it's sort of things that Mercedes didn't normally do. Russia, they weren't sure. Ultimately, they made the right call in the end, but, you know, just about, really. It was kind of a toss of the coin. Um... But I think Ferrari in particular this season, we all expected Ferrari to try and move up in the midfield, maybe not necessarily be the third best team, um, but certainly up there. And they did so well in the fight with McLaren this year and with the engine improvements that they made, particularly with the uh, energy recovery and the uh, deployment, et cetera, et cetera, to put them on par with Red Bull Mercedes and obviously the deficit in power that they had to those teams. The fact that Ferrari were up there, two pole positions, Probably should have won in Silverstone. They were unlucky not to after a great drive from Leclerc. I don't think you can argue that Ferrari, considering what they had to do and what people expected of them, I think they probably did the best overall job this season compared to the rest of the teams. Some of you might disagree with me on that one, you know, because Ferrari only come third. But I just think, and considering as well, they've probably prioritised the 2022 car as much as anyone has this season. So there's a good chance that it could pay off for them. So they've won on both counts, if you think about it. I mean, it might turn up with an absolute rubbish car next season but their strategy has been very well executed in that regard and they've not made too many mistakes at least I mean other than Monaco but that was more enforced by the driver than the team so yeah we'll have to see I'm intrigued to get your thoughts on this guys because I've kind of justified my decision and I kind of want you to see if you either agree with me or if you think I'm an idiot and that I should just stop right here but yeah um I I agree with you because of the efforts on both of the drivers. Uh, we're obviously going to go into the driver ratings later on, but I think the driver pairing with Clone Size has been fantastic. Um, but for me, as much as Ferrari have had, you know, they've really struggled with the regulation changes, I still think a team of their size should have recovered faster than I did. Sorry, Adam, I know it's your team, but that's just my opinion on the matter. No, it's, it's a fair point, um, but I think we've also got to bear in mind that they were quite limited on what they could actually recover this season. If it was a normal season where they were allowed to build the car from scratch or build it, you know, because they were only allowed those two tokens, weren't they? So there was only so yeah. much that they could do. So they were quite limited. And I think what they did do, they actually did a really good job with. It turned out to be a very, very good car. You could argue that only Mercedes and Red Bull had a better car than them. And considering that their car was terrible last year and their engine was not much better. I think Ferrari did a great job. Look, I, 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 it's all a fair point. Um, and uh, I'll let the comment section see if they agree with me or not on that one. But look, let's, let's move on. Um, let's do the drivers now. This one is probably going to be the one that's going to be more controversial. And because of that, 
I think sequentially we're going to do our list sort of like 10, 10, 10 and then work our way up to number one. So, Courtney, I'm going to come to you first on this one. Who's your number 10? Yeah. I'm going to say Sebastian Vettel. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Yeah, because he had he had a couple of... Uh, he had two podiums, didn't he? Sebastian Vettel? Uh, or just well, one? He was allowed to keep one, one of them. One got taken away. Hungry yeah. got to, but you can, I suppose for the benefit of the argument, you can add that in because it wasn't his fault. Yeah, because I think... I want to have him, I want to have him in the top 10 because as forgettable a season as it was for Aston Martin, I think Sebastian Vettel had some great moments and a little bit of a, of a rejuvenation for him on a personal level. So all things considered, I think he deserved a place in the top 10. Ah, that's very fair, very interesting. Um, well, I'm not going to save, I'm going to save the suspense. I put Vettel as my number 10 as well, but I thought I'd be the only one that did that for the exact same reasons. Um Lee, what about you? I would just say on the Vettel front, he was number 11 on mine. I was oh, debating yes, Robin right. hard, um, <laughs> but I've got George Russell as the number 10. Fair enough. Um, what was your reasons for Russell then? The the main thing is, obviously, we came into the season, didn't expect much of Williams, and they did well as a team. But apart from he actually lost his Mr. Saturday title, he, he did get beaten by the TV in qualifying, which is, um, yeah, if, so that's why I was debating, does George actually earn this 10? Because he lost... That's disgraceful, he, isn't he it? He lost his clean sheet. It was <laughs> complete. So yeah, it, it's uh, terrible. <laughs> I mean, but there was a, yeah. after the summer break, George was driving quite well. Um, obviously, that, that lap in Spa, for example, in the qualifying, that was a mighty impressive lap. Um, and he went on a, a point scoring of um, several races where he scored points, which is completely unexpected in that Williams. And... He was performing a lot better than uh, the TV in that car. Um, so, yeah, I, I um, for me, he just edged out Sebastian for that 10th spot. Oh, fair, fair enough. Well, yeah. I do agree with your both of your um, assessment about Sebastian and his uh, rejuvenation of his Ferrari. Uh, yeah. Era. Yeah, I mean, it's such a hard one. This I was trying to think who I could put in top 10. There was a few people I was sort of throwing in and out, but in the end I thought, you know what, considering that at the start of the season he had fewer running than anybody else in pre-season testing, had to adjust to a brand new car, obviously a car that had flaws and issues with it because of the regulation changes, and it was a team that certainly probably we're going to see the heights of Aston Martin after Sebastian Vettel was left F1, unfortunately. So this is kind of a project in the medium term that's going to be hard for him to get the most out of, or at least what he wants. And I think he did relatively well most of the season um, when he could. So I think he deserved a spot in the top 10. I think other drivers deserved it less than him. So I thought, yeah, I'll put him in there. Um, let's go to number nine on this one. Uh, Courtney, who have you got in number nine? Do you know what? I was going to... Um... I've wanted to give Mick Schumacher honourable mention in this top 10, but I'm going to pop Ricciardo in ninth, Ooh. you know? Uh, no, it's, and it's because, it's because of, I know he had a really, really tough season, but for me, I know I shouldn't judge a driver over one race, but that performance that you put in Monza, for me, that just shows that the Daniel Ricciardo, we all know and love, is still there somewhere. And I just think that hopefully with the regulation changes next season and the, and the fact that he's now settled in at McLaren, he might be able to tune the car more to his liking. So I just think for that moment alone, he, he's still the, the honey badger's still there. I just want to keep him in the top 10 for that reason. Yeah, it's a fair point. He was another one that I was sort of differing over where I put him in the top 10. I didn't put him in my top 10 because yeah. as much as I enjoyed that race for different reasons and you know that result and I thought it was great to see I was kind of hoping that Daniel would be able to just go on from that and pick up better results and in previous form it just didn't happen and it was if anything it was more disappointing because he'd won a race in 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 such a great way he would he didn't luck it he didn't fluke it he genuinely deserved it he was brilliant all weekend but that was the only time we really saw the real Daniel Ricciardo at McLaren this season. I certainly hope you're right, Corny, that next season we'll see better performances from him, more like the Daniel Ricciardo of old, or at the very least, keeping Lando Norris honest, you know, because he had a great season by all accounts. But uh, we'll see. Um, Lee, who did you put in ninth place in your list? Um, Charles Leclerc was... Oh, wow. Wow, this is a shock. Uh, I didn't expect him to come up so early, but uh, please elaborate. <laughs> Well, I mean, for for me, 
in the intra-team Ferrari battle, I was very disappointed in what Charles um, did. Oh, see, he had his poles, but he's a he, he's effectively let Carlos come in, and Carlos has beaten him in the intra-team battle. That was Charles's team. He beat in a way a four-time old champion. He was made the the future poster boy for Ferrari, and he's been beaten. And I think that's over the course of the season. Although he's had some great performances, that's disappointing from a driver that's supposed to be leading Ferrari into the future. Um, at least from my my uh, opinion. Just going to make a little note here on my notepad, like find Kill new <laughs> DNF one <laughs> member. <laughs> no. um, okay well i mean number nine for me uh esteban ocon um i i think ocon had a slow start to the season um obviously the highlight was hungry but i think uh you know as the season went on i think we saw more and more from esteban ocon more like the old esteban ocon um and and it, bear in mind this was a team that this season the story has been very much fernando alonso and obviously what fernando alonso we were going to get um, and I think by and large this season, there was a lot of positives to take from Fernando's first season back um, with the team and in F1 after his two-year break. But um, Ocon did definitely play his part. I think the no-stopper in uh, Turkey was impressive, which got him in the points. You know, did a great job to bring that car home in that situation. Um, and also the performance in Qatar as well, you know, where he helped Alonso get to that podium as well. As, as Lee mentioned, he was leading the race at one point. Um, and played a big part to helping Alpine secure fifth in the Constructors' Championship in a battle with Alfa Tauri, which I think we all thought at the time, Alfa Tauri, it was theirs to lose. Um, so, no, I, I think overall, I think he'd be satisfied with the season, and hopefully for his sake, there'll be more to come in the coming years. So I think, no, definitely worthy of P9. Um, P8, I'm going to go first on this one. Uh, George Russell. I, I think the reasons that you mentioned earlier, Courtney, um, that, you know, George, I think he's had a good season. Obviously, his first points, his first podium in the race that never was, but actually was. So, you know, I ain't taking that podium away from George Russell, so I don't expect anyone else to want to do that either. Um, but George, I think he had a, a strong season. Uh, his qualifying performances were good, although he did let that record of being Mr. Saturday go. So, uh, you know, you can't have everything. But, um, yeah, I, I think a good drive. And hopefully... This will set him up nicely for what is to come, which is the big drive at Mercedes next season, where the expectations are going to be mega, mega high. And hopefully the potential is as well. Uh, so, Courtney, how about you for number eight? Yeah, I'm going to put Ocon. Um, again, another, another guy that showed glimpses of the talent that he has. Um, I think he, the, the performance he put in Hungary under constant pressure from Sebastian Vettel you know, let, let's not forget that despite Sebastian Vettel being in a slow car, he's a four-time world champion, multiple race winner. You know, he would have been under constant pressure and he dealt with it well. So for that, and he got a podium as well, didn't he? In, did he get a podium as well somewhere else? No, I think he won in um, Hungary and I Hungary, think he came fourth it. in Qatar. Yeah. Or oh, fifth, yeah, he sorry, got close, fifth, didn't he? Yeah, fifth, sorry. Yeah, so, so yeah, he put in a good performance there as well. So, yeah, I think honourable mention for Ocon. Ah, fair play. Um, Lee, have we done your number eight? Or? No, not yet. No. My number eight is Fernando Alonso. Okay, ah, fair enough. Um, I think we'll move on to number seven because then we can all talk about because I'm sure Fernando's going to appear on, well, he's on my list definitely, so I'm sure he's going to appear on Courtney's. Um, yeah. But yeah, Fernando Alonso, I actually put him in seventh. Um, Courtney, how about you for P7? I'll put Russell. Okay, so um, Lee, what about you for seventh? Uh, is uh, Ocon for me? Ocon. Well, we talked about Ocon already in Russell. So, yeah, Courtney, I'm going to come to you for P6. I've got a funny feeling I know who this is going to be. So, uh, who's it going to be? I'm going to go for Leclerc. Have you wrote this down, Courtney, already, or are you just <laughs> going as because I, I just for just for the benefit of our no, do you know, listeners? Do you know? Yeah, do you know what it is? Because I just I just feel that there's so many drivers this season that have done a good job, and I feel like I'm going to miss someone out. He's changing his list oh. as he goes along. I know, this is not I how know. this works, Courtney. You need to do. I'm, it. I'm, I'm such a fanboy, though. This is the problem. I like so many of these drivers. 
I feel like I'm going to miss someone out. There's so many drivers. I'm like, nah, he had a good moment there. He had a good moment there. So I want, I want Leclerc. Leclerc has to be in there for his efforts for the team. 100%. No, fair enough. Um, okay, well, I mean, I wasn't expecting him. I thought I was expecting, to be fair, I thought Alonso was going to come up in P6 for you, but fair yeah. enough. Um, I've gone for Gasly in sixth. Um, I think Gasly's been a very, very good qualifier this season. I think that has been the hallmark of his abilities this year. And it's proved that he has certainly got some pace over one lap. Um, over the course of the race, I think that kind of got better as the second half of the season went along. But um, that coupled with some bad luck and poor strategy calls of the combination of himself and the team kind of let them down in the Constructors' Championship. But I think for Gasly, I think he has to look back on a very good season and one where he's raised his stock even more than last season, which saw him get that maiden win. And it's certainly going to put him on the radar for a lot of top teams, including, of course, Mercedes. We don't know what they're doing. And Red Bull, you never know what they're going to do. So, um, yeah, I put Gazi. I thought Gazi had a very, very good season, but I thought P6. I thought was fair. Um, has anyone not done P6 yet? Yeah, I haven't done P6. Haven't? I Sorry, I, I keep that. forgetting my place on this one. <laughs> Go on, Lee. Who's, who's sick for you? Um, I, I did debate about this one, um, but I did put Sergio Perez in the end. In wow, P6. that is. I'm yeah. surprised. I don't know if you're surprised is that he's low down or surprised that he's so high. He's up. not even on my <laughs> list, Lee. So I'm surprised to see him in sick. I mean, you know, that's my opinion on it. So what do I know? But no, I mean, please explain. That's a that's an interesting one. Um, so for me, Sergio gets this for two uh, reasons. Um, although I do admit he was a bit slow in the car and getting up to speed at the beginning of the season. Um, but compared to the previous teammates Max has had, he's been a lot closer in performance uh, and be, being more towards the front, although he qualified badly in the race, he would get there his race um craft has been a lot better than his qualifying pace um but uh, an important point is for max's title sergio's played a significant help in getting helping max get to the title providing points or getting away at lewis uh, among other things um where you think compared to valtteri he didn't get in the way of max at all um so he sergio is really strong on the team game um, for Max, and uh, although I'm not a Red Bull fan, it's they appreciate the teamwork that they he was able to help Max compared to previous drivers. I know that Max has been championship fights for previous seasons, but the other drivers weren't there to help Max if Max was in the championship fight previously. No, very true. Um, just to sort of cut the suspense, is Bottas in your list, Courtney? Because he's not in no. mine. No, no, he's uh, not in mine. No. I mean, well, based on that bombshell, Lee, I'm surprised if he's not number one on yours. But, no, uh, he's not. He's not on mine. He's not. Bottas is there. No, we love Valtteri, but you know, it wasn't his best season. We must admit. Um, okay, so we've all done a number six. So number five, uh, Lee. I'm going to come to you first. Who is your number five this season? Carlos Sainz. Okay. Okay. Courtney, what about you? Number five. Lando. Lando. I went with Leclerc. For number five so uh, I scored in the highest so I feel like I probably should justify it I think Leclerc's had yeah I don't think it's been as good a season as he would have hoped but I feel like he's he's been quite unlucky as well I mean Imola if it wasn't for Hamilton's um obviously having that accident safety car and causing that red flag uh that oh, sorry not him causing a red flag Bottas and Russell causing that red flag I should get that right um Leclerc would have finished P2 behind Verstappen and he was doing a really really good job in that race um, so he was quite unlucky not to get that because he dropped to, I think it was fourth. I think Norris and Hamilton got him on the restart. Um, so he was unlucky there. Silverstone, yeah, Hamilton was brilliant, but I think Leclerc was brilliant that day and I think he was very unlucky not to win that race. Monaco probably should have won that Grand Prix, but it was a combination of his error in qualifying, of course, the red flag and, uh, you know, very unlucky pushing it there and Ferrari obviously making a mistake of not the one mistake they probably made this season where they didn't actually check his car properly at the rear and actually uh, made, you know, it was a fatal one because he wasn't able to start. And that pole position in Azerbaijan, I think we've seen a lot this season with Leclerc where his qualifying has been very, very strong. We saw last year, he had that amazing lap, I think it was in Sakir, where he was in P4, where he should have been nowhere near that. And I think we have seen glimpses of that this season. Whilst he's not had the consistency of Carlos Sainz, I think if you 
take his best results on what he's done. I think if he'd had a better luck this season, I think he comfortably would have finished best of the rest this season. Um, the fact that he dropped at the final race of the season outside that and ended up P7 was a bit disappointing. But again, he was driving really well that day as well to a degree, or at least well enough to get that. And then, a, you know, a strategy mistake and he ends up outside, well, P10, I think it was, not something like that. So I think his season has been a bit underrated, but I will agree that um, he will be disappointed losing that inter-team battle with Sainz, um, who's been fantastic this season as well. And consistency is key. I think that's what we have to say. So, yeah, I'll put uh, the Claire in fifth. Um, number four, Courtney, who's your number four yeah. this season? Pierre Gasly. Okay, and okay. Yeah, Pierre Gasly in fourth for a reason you just uh, raised about Leclerc, and that's consistency. You know, Pierre Gasly had a really, really strong 2020, obviously with a race win. Didn't replicate that this season, but Pierre Gasly was always there or thereabouts. You know, even through practice sessions, Pierre Gasly was just consistently up there. And there were times where he was punching above the weight of that car, and that's the best way to judge a driver. He effectively carried that team. I'm not going to slag Yuki off. But, you know, he's had enough of that this season. He got a good result at the end of the um, the last race. But Pierre Gasly has carried that team this season. That team was hiring the Constructors' Championship because of Pierre Gasly. And the, the guy deserves him to be in a big team. Going on to the previous episode, if Lewis Hamilton was to announce his retirement, Pierre Gasly would be one of the top names in the frame to replace Lewis at Mercedes. Yeah, I, I very much agree with that. I can't really argue the case, argue against it. Not that I'd want to anyway. Um, there were times this season where Gasly was best of the rest, you know, in, in a car that it seemed like they might be there, but it wasn't. And uh, he did a good job to drag it there. If anything, he is you right, Corny? I think the biggest letdown for Alfa Tauri this season was the fact that Yuki was not able to get more points than he did. Uh, Lee, any comments on Pierre Gasly before we move on to your number four? Well, my comment is Pierre Gasly is my number four. Oh, well, there we go then. <laughs> there we go. Perfectly. See, we rehearsed, we didn't even rehearse that one, guys. Lee understood the assignment. He went straight for it. Yeah, no, it's uh, the, the comment on Pierre Gasly is cool. And he's already said his consistency. Uh, you, you could tell he was outperforming the car. Um, and there's Courtney touched on is you can tell a driver when they're performing at their best is they outperform the car. They're, they're not hindered by the performance of the car. And Although he, he did sadly suffer at um, Red Bull and then he had his demotion and he's, he's, he got back his confidence last year and he's taken that to a, a new level of carrying that team, as Courtney said. He's doing performance after performance and you, you have the McLaren-Ferrari uh, championship battle throughout the year. And he'll be, oh, McLaren-Pierre, Ferrari. Ferrari-Pierre, McLaren. Like, Pierre, get out of the way. This is a <laughs> Ferrari fan. What are you doing there? But like, he'd always be in that mix. And mm. it's, that wasn't because the car was there. That was Pierre putting that car yeah. in that fight that it didn't belong on merit. So he definitely deserves that top four position for me. Yeah, I know. Very, I mean, I feel like I've lowballed him a bit this season because um, I think he has been very good. But uh, yeah, no, no, he's done a great job, Pierre Gassi, this season. It's certainly one that the bigger team's going to have to keep an eye on um, in 2023, wherever he may go. Um, my number four is Lando Norris. Um, quite appropriate. Car number four, also my fourth uh, rated driver this season. Um, it has been a story of plenty of ups this season. Towards the end of the season, it did tend to fall away a bit. Not necessarily Lando's fault, um, but there have been so many days this season. I think we, we've all agreed. I think Lewis Hamilton was the man who said it right, that he's a very good driver. I think it was it Austria where or Styria one of the two yeah that's right yeah he was right up there with Lewis um in that race uh, obviously Max was running away with both of them but he was right up there with Lewis up to a point where you felt the only reason why Lando didn't finish ahead of him was because Lewis was in a murk um and and, and Lando was just fantastic and for the most part of the uh, the season Lando was right up there with Lewis and Max to a degree he was in the top three in the championship he was driving fantastically well you could have a handful of races this season where Lando could have won, you know, on a better day. I mean, Spa, although Spa wasn't really a race, Lando could have got it on pole. He was superb that weekend. Monza, the only reason why he didn't win that race is because he wanted to play the team game and let his teammate win. And that helped secure the only one two this season for McLaren. So, you know, that's a bit of history right there. Um, and then, of course, Sochi, he was fantastic there. Very, very unlucky not to win that race. You know, he did a phenomenal job 
you know, a strategy call here or there on a better day, the weather stays normal and stays dry. He wins that Grand Prix. He, I think he had Lewis beat all ends up, you know, so he has been phenomenal this season, Lando Norris. He made the step up that we all wanted him to make. We all challenged him to make now that he had a teammate like Daniel Ricciardo in the car. And I think we can all agree that I think he did a fantastic job. Um, and hopefully he continues to grow next season um, and put the end of this season behind him. Um, but he, yeah, superb stuff from Lando. Um, now we come to our top three, our podium positions. And uh, if I may, I'm going to jump in first on this one. I am giving P3 to Carlos Sainz. Um, and I think Sainz, winner of the midfield battle this season, a driver that I think a lot of people put a lot of expectation and pressure on at Ferrari, thought that he may be well beat by Charles Leclerc. And he beat Leclerc fair and square. Um, I, I will defend Leclerc, as I said earlier, and say that he had some bad luck. But consistency is key. And Carlos Sainz, I think, was it 14 point scoring positions in a row that he got that he got this season? 20, I think, in all uh, races this season he scored, which is phenomenal form from Carlos Sainz. Um, and again, you know, a, four podiums to his name as well, including at the season finale in Abu, in Abu Dhabi. So I don't think there's much more we can say about Carlos Sainz. I think mm. Sainz has thrown himself into a team that, you know, that wanted him. I thought Daniel Ricciardo would have been a better option. I said a couple of years ago, I thought Ferrari made a mistake not getting Ricciardo. But I'm so glad that I've been proven wrong. And Sainz has now proven, well, perhaps he already knew, in that he should not be discounted in this next generation of drivers. He is certainly up there. And so much so that Ferrari want to extend his current contract. So that's a fantastic thing. And I can't think of any more superlatives for Carlos Sainz. I suppose the only thing that's left is for him to win a Grand Prix. And if Ferrari produce a car that's as good as we think it's going to be next season, there's certainly no reason why he can't do that. Um, Courtney, how about you? Who's your number three? I think... Yes, spoil it, Carlos but, uh, Sainz. Yeah. yeah, for Carlos Sainz in, in P3, I think... I don't know if it has anything to do with, you know, we, we touched on it earlier in the season. I don't know if it has anything to do with the uh, a particular as advertisement on the car, but he's been a bit of a forgotten entity. And it's such a shame because he's done such a good job. You know, you think about it, it was, it was documented here, there, everywhere, how Sebastian Vettel struggled at Ferrari uh, that, that final season or so because Charles Leclerc had become the main man. Science has just come in from, from McLaren in a place that was a comfort zone for him. He was doing well. He took a gamble by going to Ferrari, let's be honest. He settled in well and outperformed his teammate over the course of the season. And you're right, Adam, I think he has to be put up there. And if if Ferrari do have an exceptionally good car, like say say they bring in the car to, to a advantage the way that uh, Mercedes did in 2020, for example, we're going to see a tasty battle between him and Clerk for this championship, for that championship. If Ferrari dominate, it's not going to be a boring season because Carlos Sainz has put himself into the echelon of drivers that could challenge for a world championship with the right machinery. Yeah, I mean, we all seem quite convinced that Charles Leclerc has got what it takes to be up there. There's always been that doubt over whether Sainz yeah. was of that degree and of that level. But based on what we've seen this season, whilst Carlos Sainz may not have the ultimate pace of a Charles Leclerc or a performance like what Leclerc did at Silverstone this season or, you know, a few other races, what we see from Sainz is that there are very, it's very rare that Sainz has a bad day. Um, and ultimately, over the course of a season, as we keep stressing with this World Championship, it's one over 22 races, not one. Um, certainly not over one lap. That's what matters the most. And the statistics and the figures will all go in Sainz's favour over the season and hence why he was the best of the rest this season. It, 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 brilliant to see. And uh, hopefully we get to see more of that. Um, Lee, who's your number three this season? Uh, so before I say my number three, I do want to say I agree with everything you said about Carlos Sainz. It was just, it was so a bit why did you put him down on the list then? Because <laughs> <laughs> I thought other drivers had more, um, had more merit. But yeah, my number three <laughs> is Lando Norris. Um, well, just uh, on there, he also he, he was very close to getting pole in Imola, which you did mention when you talked about Lando. Yes, true. Um, the only reason why I didn't mention that is because of the track limits. So yeah, we're right. trying to oh, try yeah. to overlook yeah. that. FAA and white lines, you know that it's uh, the, that was when they, that goes. was when they were actually consistent on regulations. It started going a bit crazy after <laughs> I think it was well 
I mean, other than Bahrain, where a lot of people got... Co- that was the time where that people actually did get confused, didn't they? Because I remember seeing in the comment section... Was it our last video? Oh, no, no, yes, it was. After the Abu, da- Abu Dhabi was. review, someone yeah. mentioned um, why did Max Verstappen get penalised for track limits at Bahrain and Lewis Hamilton didn't, even though he crossed it over 35 times. And we explained that Red Bull and Verstappen got confused because they thought that turn four... There was there was no negotiable on track limits. When reality, they were told and that they could go over it, just not for overtaking, and that's what Lewis did. So, um, but yeah, as I said, it just adds to the controversy with the FIA this season, as we've yeah. already talked about in our last episode. But yeah, no, you're right, Lee. Um, it was a great lap from Lando, but uh, yeah, you know, you've got to keep it within the white lines, otherwise it won't count. But uh, but he did, you know, he Depends did qualify. Which you talk to the FIA. Or... Well, that's it. I mean, he, he did qualify well with Sossi, so you know, he's got yeah, fun yeah, no, no, were no. good. Yeah, he, even in Abu Dhabi, though. Even Abu Dhabi getting that P3 start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and did well not to get involved in the Max Lewis fight. I think he wanted to stay well away from that one and managed to maintain his position. So, no, good job from Lando. Good season all round. So, here we go, guys. This will become to the final two drivers. We go. all know who they are because we haven't already named them yet. But uh, I am going to give the fun task of Lee to go first on this one. But what I'm going to do, guys, oh, I'm, I'm not going to get you to justify because I don't think we need to go into why. I think you, either way, whichever we put them, you can justify either one of them being in one or two. So I'm just going to ask for names on this one and then we'll move on. Is that all right with you guys? Yeah. 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 We'll let the comment section divulge into why <laughs> they think we're right or not. How about that? We'll let you guys on YouTube, if you're watching this, yeah. sort of whether you agree with us or if we assuming we have the same or different, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, we'll let you guys battle it out over there. So Lee, who's your number two this season? Nikita, no, 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 it's, it's Max Verstappen. <laughs> Courtney? Antonio Giovinazzi. No, 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 Max Verstappen. <laughs> uh, my number two was Lewis. Um, yeah. What? Yes, yes. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Hamilton fans. No, nope. number two, I have to say, even nah. if you'd won the World Championship. I don't need to apologise, Adam. Even if, well, I'm not apologising to you. I'm apologising <laughs> to the Lewis fanboys that are going to try I'm, and, I'm, you know, I'm, tell I'm me gonna, I'm going to set up, I'm going to set up 20 YouTube accounts and abuse you of every single one. <laughs> <laughs> That's slightly more than you normally do. No, um, <laughs> anyway, no, I, I, as I said, I, even if Lewis had won the championship, that wouldn't have waved it for me. I think, I think Max has been the best driver this season. I, I, you know, I'm not going to debate into how he won it, but I think he deserved it more than Lewis over the course of the season. So Max is my number one and uh, Lee and Courtney, Lewis is your number one on this list. Yeah. Uh, gonna... the reason, yeah. Look, I'm going to give my reason. Okay, look. Max's raw talent is undeniable. Agreed. Okay, Fantastic, fantastic driver. But in my opinion, he still has some maturing to do. Some of that, some of the driving that he put he put in, some of the defending, let's say, was reckless to say the least, and I think he needs to be marked down for it. Fair enough, um, um, uh, Lee. And well, you might as well confirm your list because we didn't actually hear you say who your number one was. Uh. No, it is it is Lewis uh, Hamilton, um, but I do want to justify just a little bit. I know it's in no justification. Um, well, we did. So like, you oh, might the court well. justified after yeah. <laughs> um, and you justified Max being uh, number one for me. Over the, if you look at the, most of the season, Max, although some dubious maneuvers and driving, has performed better. But what for me puts this first is at the point of at Austin. For you look at the championship, you're going, that's it. It's over. It's Mexico. Max is going to win there. Then Max is going to get us um, sewed up, and we're not going to have a fantastic championship fight. It's it's gone. It's the advantage there. But somehow, after Mexico, Lewis and uh, um, brought himself back into level points going into the last race, and he was a lap away from winning the championship. Which for me is a skill Max hasn't developed yet, and I'm sure he will get there. But in that face of adversity of picking himself up, especially in Brazil, where he got booted out of qualifying, um, picking himself up, get there and get that championship fight back down to zero points, um, a three race win, which he, he didn't achieve at any other point of the season um, for, for Lewis. Uh, that's why I, it was a tough this decision, but that's uh, why for me, I put Lewis at number one. 
Yeah, I think we don't want to get into the old who had the best card debate and all that no. nonsense this no. season because it, it, certainly, it certainly swung around back and forth. But I think we can all agree that Lewis's final hurdles of the season was remarkable, befitting of the championship. And I think he would have been a worthy winner if he had won the title, as we all expected and probably felt he should have done. Uh, as I said, for me with Verstappen, I think you can go one way or the other with this. Depending, you know, there's no wrong yeah. answer in this. I think the way this season has gone between the two of them, I just think what Max has done over the course of the season, if it wasn't for some bad luck that he had, I'm not going to talk about Silverstone or Monza or any of that rubbish. But there were moments in this season where Max um, was denied points through no fault of his own. Baku is a good example. I think Imola, uh, even though he won that race, Lewis caused his own problem and somehow managed to get the P2 through the red flag and safety card, giving him the sort of get out of jail free card, if you like. Yeah. Um, and managing to salvage points in Hungary after driving half a car after Baltas T-boned him into turn one. It, it's, you know, obviously this doesn't overshadow some of the more controversial moments like in Saudi Arabia and, um, and, and Monza and, and to name a few, but some of his performances, is, I mean, for me, this, the United States Grand Prix, I think was Verstappen's best drive this season, the way he kept Lewis behind him when Lewis should have won that race um, and some of the stuff we've seen for Verstappen, for me, I just thought, you know what, even if Lewis wins this championship and I thought he was going to in Abu Dhabi and probably should have done, I, I can't take anything away from Max and, um, no. you know, this season could have been won much sooner than it was. But hey, ho lot, that's, uh, I'm sure we all have our own reasons and they're equally justified. So uh, be kind, comment section, but uh, we'll have to let you guys wage war on us or anyone else in there. That's just how it goes these days. We can't fight it. So anyway... So that's our top 10 for teams and drivers. So we're going to try and pick out a few categories now. Now, we're probably going to make a few of these up on the fly and just go with this. But uh, I'm going to start us off. Best race this season. And feel free to jump in, either one of you. I know that's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, it is a hard one. A lot of good ones. Um, I'm going to say for the chaos that we got in that race, specifically towards the end, I'm going to say Sochi. And that's a weird yeah. one because uh, it feels weird saying it. Yeah, Rush, Sochi, and a good, exciting race. The the two just don't belong together. But in my opinion, I think he did. I, I think it was a great race, um, all the way up. And there was action all the way up and down the field. You know, Lewis had that long race, long battle with Lando, and obviously Sainz was battling with him at the front of the start. Um, Verstappen come from the back of the field. Bottas, sort of. Um, you know, Verstappen was last, ended up P two. And of course, the chaos with the weather as well. They just threw it into the mix when Lando had the race won. So I think it was a great race. So yeah, I'm going to say Sochi this year. Yeah. Uh, there, there's there's two for me. I think, even though you can't, you can't, you can only pick one. I want to put Italy up there for various reasons. But I think I'm going to go... Which one with... in Italy? Sorry, there's... Oh, there's yeah, two, yeah, yeah. Because have got even though, of course... <laughs> Emilia Romagna. I have that... But I, uh, I'm, I'm going to go for Brazil, and it's just that it was the, the combination of the performance from Lewis Hamilton, which, for, you know, given the the politics, this is when the season started to get naughty, really, really naughty between Red Bull and Mercedes. You know, with the Max, Max touching the rear wing, Lewis being thrown to the back, but the the, the driving one from Lewis. And then the contentious battle between Max and Lewis. That's when the seeds are really, really did get. Like, that's when it become particularly spicy. So for me, I'm going to have Brazil. Okay. Yeah. For on, me, I, uh, I think uh, Hungarian um, for me was uh, I mean, a very enjoyable race. Yeah. No, I. I, I... I think that's, they're all good shouts. There's so yeah. many you could have chose from. And to be fair, those would have been up there with my list anyway, but is what it is. Um, well, this one should be a bit easier. The worst race of the season. And for disclaimer, I'm not including Spa because technically that wasn't a race. No, we're not having Spa. That was not a race. I'm sorry. I know, you know, they did what they did and, and ultimately it wouldn't have mattered in terms of the championship. So, you know, that argument died after Abu Dhabi in terms of, oh, well, you know, if that wasn't counted as it shouldn't have been Max when it won, he would have done anyway. So it wouldn't have mattered. Um, yeah. So other than Spa, 
what was the worst race mm-hmm. of the season, guys? Uh, Lee, I'm going to let you come to this one first. I'll be surprised if we have different ones. I think we all know which one it's going to be. Now you've taken away my first choice. There uh, was another obvious one. Um, as much as I love the circuit, mm. it's, it's always just boring racing, which is Monaco. For me. Yeah, I'm going Monaco as well. Uh, it, it disappointed me because of, you know, Mercedes was struggling. Well, Hamilton was struggling. Bottas actually had a good weekend, to be fair. Um, and it was so disappointing because of what happened to Charles Leclerc, you know, by his own doing and the team's mistake as well. But that could have been much more exciting for the race if Verstappen had to get past Leclerc in that race, but ultimately it didn't matter. Um, so, yeah, Monaco's a funny one. It, it's never really one that serves up the most excitement. It's usually shrouded in controversy, whatever happens. Um like Ricardo's won a couple of years ago in Hamilton, of course, with that mistake for pit stop. But uh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, other ones can we do? Best individual performance of a driver at a grace weekend this season. Um, Courtney, I'll let you go first with this one. I have to, I have to go back to Brazil. Lewis, is, Lewis Hamilton's performance in Brazil. Uh, that's but I That for me, that's up there, one of his best performances in his career. And that says a lot. Oh. Ab- absol- absolutely phenomenal. Like, you look back on that performance and that's world championship worthy alone, in my opinion. Yeah, I- I'll agree with that. And-, and the funny thing is, is that we actually made a top 10 video on Lewis Hamilton's wins, which I'll put a little mm. card for. For those of you who haven't seen it, we did a rundown of Lewis Hamilton's top 10 wins in F1 uh, a little while ago after I think he won his 100th race um, yeah. at-, at Sochi, of course. Um, but obviously... If we'd done it a bit later, that one would have certainly made the list in that top 10. Um, Brilliant performance. Lee, what about you? I completely agree. Clean sweep. All right, fair enough. Brazil 2021 from Lewis Hamilton. Best individual performance of anyone this season. Um, The worst individual performance of any driver this season is a nice one to go for. There's a lot of moment. There's been a lot of them um, this season after what we've had. I'm going to kick this one off. Nikita Mazepin at the Bahrain Grand Prix. That was my one. Three yeah, corners no. and he was off uh, in his first race. I'm sorry. I know we don't want to knock on Nikita too much, but um, yeah, for me, it was just, I think after everything that had happened over the winter break and all that had happened when he was coming to F1, it was just meme worthy. Um, you know, for first F1 race, the last thing you want to do is throw yourself off the course by your own doing as well. He didn't contact anyone. He didn't take him out. He just spun off at turn three. So yeah, uh, Courtney, what about you? Because Lee's agreed with me on that one. Do you know what? Because be, because there are so many, I'm I'm just going to say one for the sake of it and say Nicholas Latifi at Abu Dhabi because he just cost oh, it cost, no. it cost the no. world championship, and as and he has contributed to all the nonsense that we're still hearing to this very day. Thanks a lot. He's off. He's off on holiday, probably having the time of his life, and we're still having to deal with toxicity because of that mistake he made. If you would like to send some hate mail, Courtney's way and tell him he's an absolute idiot. His address is, no. Um, <laughs> oh, no was, do you know what? I'll throw another one in there just for the sake of trying to cleanse this one because there was another bad one. Uh, Bottas at Hungary. Yeah. When he yeah, literally yeah, went bowling. Yeah. And then Lance Stroll at Hungary when he literally followed Bottas and did the same thing, but no one ever talks about that. Um, okay, so I was trying to think of some other ones as well. Um, oh, there we go. Um Best lap this season? In a race or in a... It can be in qualifying. a race, it can be qualifying. It's something in, a, in an actual session, not like practice or anything, obviously. I was going to say, you included practice in there. No, a best <laughs> lap this uh, from an individual driver this season. Can I go first? Yeah, if you want to, like, but dive in, because uh, we've got okay, dead air yeah, otherwise. I'm, so. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Max Verstappen's Zabby Dabby, whole position. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was that was that was up there for me. Uh, there was yeah. one of them. Um, I mean, we can chuck in some other laps as well. It doesn't have to be yeah. an ultimate best one, but that's a really good shout. To be fair, yeah. Um, under the circumstances, under the pressure, given what had happened at Saudi Arabia just before that, where he equally could have done an even better one that never happened. Uh, it's amazing how people talk about that as if like, oh, it would have been the best. Well, it would have been, but it wasn't because he crashed. So. Um, exactly. It wasn't. so, But no, that's a really good chat, Courtney, actually. I, w- I didn't actually think of that one, to be fair. So no, good chat. I'm going to say George Russell's Q3 lap in Belgium. Yeah, that would be mine in the wet. as well. Oh, Lee, I'm going to let you go first next time because I keep stealing yours, <laughs> mate. Phenomenal lap from George um, in the wet. And 
in a way, it was not long after he got the Mercedes drive, wasn't it? I think it was that weekend, wasn't it? Or was it just after they announced it? It might have been just after they announced it. I think it was just after. It. Yeah, because some of the, yeah, because I think they announced it just after. Because I remember him sort of being in tears over the podium, but there was much more to it than just that. I think he knew. Pressure was off. Went for it. And he very nearly got it on pole. It was only because Verstappen had a, he made a mistake, I think, in the final sector. I think Verstappen nicked it off him, didn't he? So, uh, which would have ended up being a race win. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, fantastic from George. So, um, Ali, have you got any other ones that you want to nominate uh, in there? or it, It's more of an honourable mention because it is in practice. Um, but I do want to highlight Fernando Alonso at um, the Dutch Grand Prix. Um, obviously, the I can't remember which turn it is, but the banked turn. Um, they ordered, it was only Fernando that found the quickest line through there first, and all the other drivers then copied him. Mm hmm because he was in, in P1, he was setting the fastest times. I don't think he was top to P1, though, but in that, in that point, he was setting the fastest times through that corner. And so I just get an honourable mention, not for the best lap, because it wasn't overall, but the fact that every driver then copied Fernando, I think it deserves uh, at least recognition for him discovering the line first, who's then's fault. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, when you were saying like everyone was sort of copying Fernando, I'm thinking back to Russia at the start of the season, uh, earlier in the no, season. No, 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 everyone copied Russia. The first lap from Fernando, that was genius. It was so funny. Um, I think that's actually going to bring us to our next point as well. What was the funniest or meme-worthy moment this season? Uh, Lee, I'm going to let you go first, just in case we uh, don't say the same thing. No, I, I, I mean, I don't have one uh, to hand at the moment, I'm afraid. I need to think. <laughs> Go on, Courtney. I feel like you've got one on your mind. It has, it has to be. It has to be the overtake at Monaco that nobody saw. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know what? I forgot. Yeah, because you know what has happened. We have to know. Crofty yeah. on the mic and cuts to the uh, the graphic of Lance Stroll and then cuts to him a replay of him making a mistake over um, at the swimming pool chicane as well. So yeah. Uh, Yes, um, the one overtake that we didn't see between Vettel and Gasly when we was like, oh my God, who's got the position? And it was Sebastian Vettel. And uh, we never actually saw it on the live broadcast. So uh, yeah, well done, F1 TV director. I forgot all about that one, Courtney. Yeah. We let the TV director <laughs> off. We can't allow that one. No, for me, I think the funniest moment of the season, the one that produced a lot of good meme content was the restart at Hungary where Lewis Hamilton is the only person <laughs> on the grid. And that cost him the world championship. Yeah, think yeah, about it. It, it, yeah, yeah. Potentially, I mean, we could go through loads of moments this season that's cost Lewis the title. Obviously, the one that did um, wasn't his fault. But yeah, it's just it's just the memes that come from it afterwards. I think what was it? Matt Gallagher said, "Me and all my friends that love F one, um, or <laughs> me on the grid at open lobbies when it's all glitching and stuff like that." Oh, it's so funny. So many good stuff in there. But that was just—it was just—I'd never seen a one car start. I've, we've seen a six car start in F one. I've never seen a one car start. I mean, could you imagine what would have happened if Lewis had gone in the pits as well? Literally, would have done the normal start procedure with no cars. That would have been even better. The only maybe next season, who knows? We might get another one like that. But yeah, apps. By the way, guys, look. We've put loads and loads of different questions in there. Do drop in some of your answers to some of these questions as well. Let us know, obviously, what question it's related to. And let us know some of your favourite moments this season. Because there's a lot of really funny ones in a... You know, we're trying to make light of a very, very intense season. There's some real, real highlights. Um, let's go for... Yeah. Oh, sorry, go on, Lee. I think on. It's, it's not so much on track action, but it was an interview. I think, I believe, it was at Sochi. Um where Landon Norris had said uh, he was obviously um, ahead of Lewis. Uh, do correct me if I'm wrong if it wasn't Sochi. But he, he said in the interview, oh, you, you kept the world champion at bay. And he's like, does that mean I make me the world champion then? And then the interview, he's like, oh, yeah, of course it does. <laughs> and Landon gives me in his uh, away fashion, um, which is just uh, funny to see him when he's uh, giving away, because once he starts, he can't stop. That's it. <laughs> Even though he's trying to be a serious driver now, it's... Uh, I yeah, still, Lando. yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, we love that about Lando, that sort of whimsical nature. There was a moment that he did uh, Abu Dhabi that did make me laugh on the um, pre-race interview on the grid where he was talking to Sky and they asked him who did he think was going to win between Max and Lewis and obviously he didn't have an answer immediately. He saw Toto running towards him, quickly turned around and went away and then come back and said Max and then ran away before Toto got there, um, <laughs> which was quite funny. Um, how about the 
the biggest shock moment, not the WTF moment of the season. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be the uh, last lap of the last race. There's a lot of it going on. But was there a moment this season? I'll, I'll see, like, I might have spoiled it for you. I'm going to push you for another one, Courtney, because there are other ones yeah, as well okay. this season. Maybe, maybe, no, the, the last lap doesn't count as an option. Yeah, All right, because yeah. technically it shouldn't have happened. There we okay. go. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that happened over several laps as well. So, uh, you know, it's hard okay. to describe uh, it as a moment. Okay, going to gonna sort of stick to that topic and say the uh, the bartering we saw in Saudi Arabia. What the hell was that? What the hell? What a joke. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what about you? Um, for me, it's the, the, the fast that was um, Belgium. Um, Spa Grand Prix that was yeah was there a moment in that race uh, that when they decided you? to um, I actually just try and do the race under the safety car and then red flag it it's, it's, just, it's a no sequence of laps but yeah that was to me is what the fuck this is I mean it was um, literally four hours of rain yes yeah. <laughs> I think there was one moment in that race where we saw some of the marshals over at um, Stavolo and they were just sort of throwing um, like balls into the gravel. They were playing some sort of game. I don't know what the game was, but they looked like they were having a good do time. You, Adam, do you reckon there was like some web enthusiasts watching, well, actually just watching the, the Grand Prix? Well, what should have been the Grand Prix? The scene around that with a lot like, of fucking load of popcorn. And it's like, oh, this is great stuff. <laughs> I mean, everything's a hobby if you think about it. Uh, well, to it, oh, well, there's some things definitely aren't, but I'm not going to get into what those are. Um, but yeah, I'll, you know, there might be some meteorologists out there for, you know, it's a bit boring day, chuck on the F1 and go, oh, I can watch the weather whilst I'm watching the F1 as well. This is fun. <laughs> Literally watching grass grow um, at the same time. No, I think for me, I think the biggest WTF moment this season was probably when Verstappen and Hamilton collided at Monza. I yeah. just think, considering we talked about when they would collide again, it was funny because we used to talk about it and it just happened literally the race later. And I think because it had already happened once at Silverstone, we thought, is it going to happen again? And then it, and it did. And just the shock factor from everybody and obviously what it did and everyone. So I remember social media, everyone was blowing up. Everyone was going crazy. Literally, the cars were mounting each other. I think someone put Peggy 18 over it because it wasn't sensitive for kids. It, it was just absolute chaos. And uh, it's just a hallmark of what has been an incredible season. And just, the, you know, you never think you'd see that in F1 again. And then there it was. Um, who's been the surprise this season? Now, this can be a good or a bad thing. And I think we'll round this. I think this would be one of the last ones that we do before we yeah. sign off. Um, guys, do you have a surprise of the season? Courtney, who's your surprise yeah. of the season? Uh, going back to something mentioned earlier on, Carlos Sainz. I, I always knew he was a solid driver, particularly from his time at McLaren. The way he settled in a Ferrari and beat let, let's let's not forget exceptional Charles Leclerc is he's he's up there, and he and he beat Charles Leclerc. So for me, Carlos Sainz, fantastic job from the lad this season. Lee, what about you? Uh, I I completely agree with what he says, but to be something different, uh, I'm going to pick a surprise for Daniel Ricciardo, but it wouldn't be a good surprise. It's a bad surprise, mm. as in disappointed. Um, I I expected more. From him throughout the season and expecting him to not struggle the entire season apart from Monza. Um, uh, I thought he'd be no, no, the judging his caliber of driving, but it's I expected more from the Honey Badger. And he, he, I just really hope he's back next next year and the car is more his biking. But yeah, it's a bad surprise, best of a surprise. Doesn't have to be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's fair enough, fair enough. Um, I, I'm going to go on those lamps and say uh, a bit disappointed this season with uh, Aston Martin. I, I think they would have just been, I think they would have been a lot better. There was a lot of promise, a lot of hope for them that they may, people were saying, could they even challenge Red Bull Mercedes? And they were nowhere near, nowhere near that. Um, so yeah, such a disappointment for them. I'm trying to think of one nice one to kind of round off with. So, uh, I mean, Feel free to throw one in there, guys, if you can think of right. one. A nice surprise, uh, McLaren one two, the only one two. Well, no, I meant like, yeah. I, well, I, I was going to That was a nice surprise. I support McLaren. I, that was a nice surprise. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Ocon's, Ocon's winning on Grey. Okay, so you how that one. Okay, how about this one? The wholesome moment of the season. How about that? 
awesome. Oh, something that warms the oh, cockles of your heart. One of those ones. You know what? It, like, it's going to be a random one, but George Russell's podium in um, Spa because you know the the lads should have won in Bahrain last year, and yeah, the the Spa race was a write off. But for me, that evened out the the terrible result for him in Bahrain. Okay, Lee, do you have one? I mean, I was thinking of that one. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> said that one. Uh, no, I'll stick with uh, Spa and George Russell. Um, as I say, it was a really uh, happy moment in that aspect. Yeah, I think for me, and this probably where kind of lines with my biases a little bit or my interest in F1, I think is a better way of putting it. Um, they were asking all the drivers, I think it was on one of the F1 Grill the Grid videos. And well, there's two, there's two for the same, for similar sort of things. One of which was uh, Sebastian Vettel successfully naming every single F1 world champion in order oh, yeah. that was from 2020 yeah. to 1950. And I thought it was incredibly impressive and wholesome as well. Just shows how much of a, I mean, they're all fans of the sport and they all have F1 like the rest of us. So of course, they, you know, they're obsessed a better way of putting it but just Seb but with just another reason why we love Sebastian Vettel um, and I think the other one also involving Sebastian Vettel there's a lot involving Sebastian Vettel could have his own highlight reel in this wholesome category but I think for me um, was the one where after the race at the British Grand Prix everyone was getting really excited everyone was happy because Lewis had won at home obviously um, and obviously the incident with Verstappen, it was a huge talking point as well and the controversy involved in that. But after the race, everything was all said and done. Sebastian Vettel stayed behind with uh, a lot of the cleanup crew and he was collecting rubbish from the stands that had been left behind and people not put in the rubbish bins and spent a good couple of hours just cleaning up the circuit with those people. And to me, I mean, as I said, I could name a whole list of things Sebastian Vettel has done this season alone. That, that would justify how wholesome a human being he is. But it just, you know, that one was for me, it was just like, yeah, that's said for you. Wow. Um, on top of the, yeah, all the other stuff that he's done. Um, is there any more that we've got in, guys? I mean, Lee? Yeah. Sound like you got one. Um, be- best joke of the season, because you, uh, I've got one. To oh, go on then. Um, Sebastian joke. Vettel, where he wants to touch Lewis's rear wing. <laughs> the engineers I don't. And that is not a euphemism, guys. Yeah. He actually wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, that's a good one, actually. Yeah, because that was after Verstappen got a €50,000 yeah. fine for touching uh, Lewis's rear wing. Seb wanted to do that, and he said he touched the front wing only for 25000 He thought it might be. That's a good one. I like that one. Courtney, do you have a funny moment of the season or a joke yeah, of the season? Yeah, I, I, I think it, it went it went overboard in the last couple of races, but I think the back and forth between Toto Wolff and Christian Horner was pretty entertaining to watch. Yeah, I, I, I would say that's pretty entertaining. And uh, I think we asked Lee who we thought would win in a charity boxing match as well. So um, we kind of ended on that one already. Um, I'll be honest with you. I think I'm going to agree with Lee's one on that one. I thought that was re- pretty good. In an otherwise uh, tense moment, I think it was, you know, Seb to make light light hard of it. Or Fernando's El Plan. Um, plan, plan. Yeah, L plan. We have to wait and see if that comes into effect next season. Anyway, guys, I think we're clutching the straws at this point. So I think we're yeah. going to wrap this season review up. <laughs> um, thank you for bearing with us. Of course, uh, let us know what you you know thought of this season, and of course, some of your highlights of this season, and answers to some of the questions, and obviously that we've put in our season review. And that is the final podcast of 2021 for DNF1. I hope you have enjoyed uh, our content whether you followed us for one episode or you followed us throughout the entire year or if you've been with us since day one all i just want to say is thank you so much to every single one of you that have decided to take time out of your lives to hear us talk about formula one whether you agree with us whether you think that we're biased or we're idiots or whatever we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our content listen to our podcast and uh yeah dive into what we think about the topics in formula one and all the big talking points that come with it so um until next year, getting that one out of the way before the rest of the cliches come in from everyone else this sort of time of year, all I can say is hope you are well, 
Please stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your year, however you see fit to enjoy it. And we will see you again for more great content in 2022. So until next year, we've been DNF1 and we will see you in the next episode of the DNF1 F1 podcast. Take care.